tiny, vibrating strands of energy, occupied an infant universe. The particular ways these strands wiggled produced various particles. Among these first particles were quarks. The universe cooled, allowing quarks to bind into groups of three, forming boreans. These boreans also bonded, forming nucleons. Again, the universe cooled, and tiny electrons were captured into the nucleon's orbit and hydrogen first formed. Due to gravity, knots of hydrogen gas began to coalesce into large knots, eventually forming galaxies. In the outer arm of one of these galaxies, an enormous cloud of gas had formed. In pillars of this gas, new stars were being produced. In the core of one star, hydrogen fused to form helium, later, beryllium, and ultimately, carbon. Eventually, the star burned up all its fuel. Following a supernova, the star's elements were seeded throughout the galaxy. Shock waves propelled a particular knot of gas into its own region of space. In time, most of the gas gravitated towards its center and ignited as a new star. Most surrounding matter was vaporized. Some heavier debris, however, remained in orbit. This debris began to gather, forming clumps. then larger conglomerates and eventually planets One of these planets endured a hostile infancy. The planet's surface was bombarded by comets and ravaged by volcanic eruptions. Volcanic steam rose up from clouds. then returned as liquid water. And oceans formed.
Meanwhile, meteorites from the supernova penetrated the planet's atmosphere, delivering carbon, nitrogen, and hydrogen into hot pools of water. The sun's energy catalyzed chemical bonds between these molecules, forming new carbon compounds. Two such compounds, hydrogen cyanide and ammonia, bonded themselves, forming adenine. Adenine linked with other nucleotides, forming RNA. Some of these RNA molecules could self-replicate. Eventually, DNA replaced RNA as a more efficient replicator. Other molecules, lipids, formed tiny bubbles. Particles inside were kept safe from external forces. Soon, DNA found a new home inside these bubbles. In time, a new inner force began to influence the sustenance of these structures. The presence of microtubules may have allowed for quantum computations to take place in these structures, making them alive. They reproduced. They metabolized food. They sensed their environment. Some cells evolved chloroplasts, making them photosynthetic. This released oxygen into the atmosphere. More advanced cells began to form colonies. In time, they could no longer function independently. They behaved entirely for the whole. And, the first multicellular organism was born. nerves and muscle later evolved. These animals could now move. In flatworms, a new bilateral body plant first appeared. It evolved a head, two eyes, and a brain. In acorn worms, a heart and circulatory system evolved. Angular-like structures. In Pekaya, a primitive nerve cord evolved. Canodonts evolved teeth to help with ingesting plankton. In primitive fish, like Hycurishtes, the first true backbones appeared. Protective armored plates evolved around the head and thorax. A complex brain allowed, for the first time, a capacity for memory. Bones and fins first appeared. With powerful jaws, Hunting soon replaced scavenging.
bones, in their fins, broadened into the first limbs. In a sea of predators, these limbs proved to be favorable. Limbs enable an escape onto a new, safe, territory. Lungs enabled them to breathe on land. Scales retained water, keeping these land animals cool, and reptiles were now equipped to colonize the uplands. With blood and oxygen being pumped through an advanced heart, they could now travel at higher speeds. Bodies further developed. Body temperature was first regulated with the evolution of sails. Synodons evolved a mammal-like jaws with specialized teeth. They bonded in pairs. Their new jaws created space for middle ear to develop, heightening their awareness. One branch of synodons Mammals evolved body hair for insulation and milk glands to feed their young. Their brains evolved in the cortex, an area associated with higher functions. A common genetic ancestor of mice and humans speciated. One group of mammals took to the lower branches of trees, feeding on fruit and leaves. Their claws however, limited their adeptness in the trees. In early persimmons, grasping hands replaced claws. Forward-facing eyes gave them improved vision 